Hello everyone. Last week we sent out an email asking you to create an account in Kahoot. And this is that email. It's entitled Homeroom Teachers Please Read on December 9th. So if you need to go back to your email and find it, you can do that. Basically, you're going to go to getkahoot.com and sign up for an account. And this just shows you how to do that. So make sure you choose teacher account so that you can run these as a teacher and then use your Oshkosh Area School District email address as uh, your account there. So do that part first and then get logged into Kahoot. And once you're in to Kahoot, what's going to happen then is we're going to send you eventually a link to a Kahoot game, just like Eric has done here. And uh, I've already logged into Kahoot and now I'm going to click on this particular link and it's going to open up for me. And I know I'm logged into Kahoot because it actually says what my username is down there. So it says hello and then my username. And as a teacher on my smart board, I'm going to go ahead and push the play button. And my students are not ready to go just yet until I hit start. And when I push start, it gives me a few options to run this Kahoot. And basically, I can choose that uh, each player has uh, their own device. So if you want all students to take it, um, you can do that. Just push classic and then every single student will be able to log into it. Um, then if you decide that you want to do team mode rather than classic, you can do that. And basically, you'd have one computer open and then you have a team of like four students or something like that, basically, and you can set that up that way. Uh, then students would discuss, and then as they decide to answer, one person answers with that Chromebook. For the simplicity part of it, I'm going to go ahead and just click on classic. And then as a teacher, I, I've chosen classic, and then it's basically starting this game up for me. It's telling students right there that they need to go ahead and get their... Um, Chromebooks ready and there will be some music that plays right here so if your speakers are on just be aware of that it can be kind of loud at times um, but if you uh, want to turn it down you can certainly do that so now this is the teacher view and this is what's up on my smart board and essentially I'm telling kids to go over to a browser window and then just go ahead and type in kahoot.it so I'm going to do that over on the side here and then on the right side and this side I'm going to be a student so I'm going to go ahead and type that same thing myself kahoot.it push enter and then it asked me for this game pin. So this game pin then I can go ahead and type in as a student. So 792-4762. And then I'll enter that. And that student's going to start. I actually have another window open over here that uh, is not related to what you can see on the screen. But you're going to be able to see it shortly. So I'll enter here two, with two different students. This first student's nickname is going to be student1. And then you'll see that appear on the screen on the left hand side. And when student two gets in here on my other computer, go ahead and hit go. And now you can see student one and student two. Okay, so as a as a teacher, you're gonna be able to see the names of all of your students as they pop up here. And students can type in um, whatever they want in here. So make sure that you're when you talk to them about this, that they type in something appropriate, otherwise inappropriate things will appear on your smart board. So once they type in their names and you can see them all, you're ready in the left-hand screen here as a, as a teacher to go ahead and push start. And once you push start, it tells students to get ready and there's a little progress bar. So both of my screens say get ready, the uh, two student screens that I have. And it says what side of the hallway should you walk on? That's the question. And then the students have to answer immediately. On the left-hand side, they have the options over here. So uh, they would see basically this diamond is what the, is the right answer. So if the student one pushes the diamond, for example, on this side, it uh, doesn't tell them if they're right or wrong just yet until everybody has answered or until the teacher has pushed the next button or the skip button. And so this student, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and click on the wrong answer. And so now we have student one who has answered correctly and student one is over on this side and then student two has answered incorrectly and this is how they answered so you could talk to them about say like no it doesn't matter which uh which side your bestie's on you need to walk on the right side and once you're done with that question you go ahead and push next and then students are prompted um, basically this part will show the scores if a student answers fast and correct their score goes up uh, but after the scoreboard shows you can push next and then it ready students for the next question. So this next question then, what is the process uh, to follow if you need to use a pass and leave class? Uh, let's see if we can answer incorrectly for, for both of these. So student one is going to answer first again, it's going to answer incorrectly, and then student two will answer incorrectly as well. 
Okay, so they're both incorrect. And now this case, you can see that uh, one student answered the just leave, one student answered ask a teacher, and then the actual answer was supposed to be fill out a pass and have a teacher sign before leaving. So uh, then we'll push next again, you'll see the scoreboard. And then uh, basically this is how it's gonna go throughout. Um, when you get to the end of the quiz, you can end it early if you run out of time, otherwise you keep on pushing next until all the questions are done. Um, and then when it's, once it's over, you'll end up seeing basically the, uh, uh, what it's going to be like. So student one in this case won with 792 points. Uh, it shows how many correct they had, how many incorrect. We only went through two questions in this case. On my other screen, it says uh, that I was in the top five. Well, there's only two players, so uh, obviously that person's going to be in the top five. Uh, then you can, as a teacher, look at feedback and results if you want to and uh, take a look at how people answered if, uh, if you like. Okay. And after that point, the game is over and you are done. Uh, let us know if you have questions. Hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about how it's going to go with your students.